Hello and welcome to Lord Fan Gaming Plays Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition. I'm your host, Lord Fan, and today's Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition video guide. I'm going to show everybody the basics of this game from creating your character, combat, the UI, and even some tips about the randomization of uh, loot in this game in dungeons. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Icewind Dale content like this and Dungeon Dragon content too. And do not hit that notification bell so you'll be up to date on all my uh, content and videos. So, you're wondering, okay, I just got Icewind Dale, the normal edition from Good Old Games, or better yet, the Enhanced Edition, and I do not know what to do. Well, guess what? Help is on the way. I'm here to help you all out. Now, the game was originally released in June 29th of the year 2000, then it got enhanced in October 30th of 2014, and now it has arrived officially on the consoles on October 15th, 2019. Now, real quick about the difficulty of the game, it starts out easy, normal, hardcore, and then there's Heart of Winter mode. We're not going to touch Heart of Winter mode at all. No, my advice on difficulty overall is just start on either the hardcore rules or lower. So now, we're going to skip Heart of Winter since that's an expansion pack and higher level uh, pack, so we're going to select Icewind Dale. That's the first thing you want to do is uh, that. Now, real quick about the story, it's about you and six adventurers together saving the ten towns from disaster. That's behind the scenes, that's really bad. Now, here's the thing about creating your own party. This is different than Bar's Gate. Bar's Gate, you had one character, one life. That character dies, game over. This game, six characters, they all die, game over. So you have five dead and one alive to bring everybody back and resurrect them and still go on. So this is the thing we're going to do is custom party. You want to do custom party first because you want to get used to your characters you want. The default party is nice. I advise against this because of one main reason. I'd rather have people could get in control of their own parties instead of just having a default party. You might not like the classes for it. So this guy will show every single class there is in the game and help your uh, selection out much uh, better. So they also uh, carry this uh, party system to the Bar's Gate game which is nice but still like I said before one life that's it. Main character dies. Now this game, nope, six, we're going to create our party right now. So you're going to hit the creation menu and we're going to select our uh, gender. You can become male and female, which is uh, really nice. So select which one you feel comfortable for each and every one character. You can have all six females and all six males. It's up to you all on that. Now next up, these uh, porches are just purely uh, cosmetic. As I said before, pick which one you want to pick. Now if you're playing a PC version, you can transport pictures or uh, photos from other games into this game. makes it really awesome. Now next up is the races. Let me give everybody a difference between dual classing and multi-classing. Now multi-classing, they'll share experience between the uh, classes or multi-class. For instance, an elf say, is a fighter, a mage, and a thief. They have to share the experience pool between them. They'll be slower leveling those classes. However, they have access to abilities with some restriction, of course. Now, for instance, humans, on the other hand, with dual classing, well, guess what? You uh, level one class, say you want to be a fighter, you stop wanting to be a fighter at level, say, 13. You want to become a mage now. Then, at the level 14 mage, then your fire abilities do come back. Now, humans right now just average at everything. They can become all the classes again, except for one or two. I'll uh, touch up on that in a bit, but still, if you want to go dual class and go ahead, I advise against it in this game. But I do advise for it in Baldur's Gate 1 since you're focusing on one character instead of six. That's my main reason. Now, Elves on the hand of the hands plus one dexterity, minus one constitution, have resistance against charm and sleep, and infravision, which is very nice. Next up is uh, Half Elves. They have infravision, less resistance, but no penalties. That's really uh, good. After this uh, will be the uh, Dwarf. They're very strong. Plus one constitution, negative one dexterity, negative two charisma. However, they have some resistance and some good saving throws, and they can see in the dark. After that will be the halflings. They have plus one dexterity, minus one strength and wisdom. However, they're very uh, good for thieving abilities, and they have some very nice saving throws. After the uh, halfling class are gnomes, plus one intelligence, minus one wisdom, and they have some nice saving throws. Infravision, they're great for uh, casters, such as mages. And last but not least, half orcs. Plus one strength, plus one constitution, minus two intelligence. They're great for frontline fires. So overall, pick which one you feel that is right for you. That's my advice for uh, races in Icewind Dale. 
So pick which one's right for your six party uh, members. Now let's talk about the classes next. I'll uh, go over them. First off, our fires, they're uh, frontline warriors that can wear almost any weapons and armor. With a few restrictions from uh, class only weapons and armor, they have 10 uh, hit point dice. That's 1d10 when you roll the dice every time you level up. They have Grandmaster Specialization in melee weapons and more. Now Berserkers, on the other hand, they use Rage, like a mini Rage version, which busts them up a bit in their attack and a little bit of their AC. They become winded at the Berserking. Now Wizard Slayers, on the other hand, they hit their foes. Spell failure, disadvantages, of course, is uh, they can't use any magical items apart from weapons and armor. Now, Ken's eyes, on the other hand, their disadvantages, no uh, armor or bracers, cannot use ranged weapons. However, they do hit like a Mack truck, have extra AC, and they're fast in certain weapons. They may use Kai, which is powerful. Now, Barbarians have the most hit point dice, which is 1d12 when you roll of the dice. Their rage is very powerful. They move fast. And when they rage, it is very strong and powerful. So that's it for the fires, except for one more we're going to talk about real quick, which is for the dwarf. Now, dwarves, they become dwarven defenders. That's the option they can become. Now, dwarven defenders, they have a whole bunch of defenses. However, they're restricted to, I think, four uh, ticks on axes and hammers. And you only have to be a dwarf. That's the only uh, disadvantage for the dwarven defender. Other than that, they're really good frontline tanks. I used them before, and they are great. Now, next up is the ranger class. They're a cross between a fighter and druid. They can wear any uh, weapons and armor and wear helmets. They have two tick specialization. They can charm animals. They can track uh, things down. They also have favorite enemies. Favorite means they have bonus against their enemies. They get their spells starting at 6. You know, it's level 1. They're restricted to a good alignment. But they have 10 hit point dices. Now, archers, on the other hand, they specialize more in ranged weapons. However, their melee weapons comes one tick. Specialization cannot use charm animals and cannot wear any metal armor. Stalkers, on the other hand, cannot wear. Uh, they can only wear stud, but they can also backstab and cast spells, which are very good though. Really good for this game. Last but not least, is the Beastmaster. They summon animals. And they have high and shadow move uh, silently. Very uh, good. Other than that, I'm gonna be honest. They suck. Just trust me. They suck. That's it for the Rangers. Now, next up is the Paladin class, which is crossed between a fighter and a cleric. Now, their alignment restricts them. I mean, you got to be lawful good, except for the black guard. More on that. They can cure disease, detect evil, lay on hands, which heals themselves or others, smite evil, can use weapons just like uh, the uh, fires. They're restricted to two ticks. They have 110 uh, hit point dice rolls, which is uh, good. Now, cavaliers, they can remove fear, immune to charm, fear, poison, and more. However, they cannot use ranged weapons at all. Now, inquisitors, they can dispel magic and see through illusions. However, they're very restricted against. Can't turn undead, cannot lay hands, cannot cure disease, cannot cast spells, but they're immune to hold charm. Undead hunters are immune to uh, hold and drain levels. However, they cannot use lay on hands and cure disease. And they have a uh, damage bonus against the undead. Now, next up is the Black Guard. They're, they're the anti paladin. They're very evil, obviously restricted evil. They're immune to level drain and fear, may turn undead just like paladins. Um, here's the thing about them, too. They can also use poison weapons. Aurora, which is very nice, and Absorb Health. They are really evil, just trust me. Now, next up is the Cleric. Now, they can wear any helmets and armor. However, they're restricted to blunt weapons. They're only one for sustaining weapons and armor. They may turn undead, which is very powerful. May cast priest spells, which from healing, attacking, and even buffing, which is more. Wisdom is their dual classing uh, requirement. Now, Priests of Talos are evil uh, clerics that can use lightning spell storm shields. However, you're restricted to evil and chaotic neutral. Now, next up is the Priests of Helm. They're neutral, and they can also summon a sword, cast true seeing that sees through illusion, but they're restricted to lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, and true neutral. Now, Priests of Lanthar, they can also do Boon and Lanthar, which is like a little saving throw ability, which is nice, and hold undead once per day. However, you have to be lawful good, Basically, you have to be good. Now, Priest of Tear, you have to be lawful. Except for you can't be evil, but you can also be lawful good too. They have Divine Favor, which is a buff. And now, Priest of Tempest right here gives you Holy Power and Chaos Bow, which buffs you up very nicely. However, you're restricted to the uh, Chaos Spectrum. So that's it for the uh, Cleric classes. Now, next up are the Druids. They're restricted to non-metallic armor. They're restricted to some weapons and armor. However, they cast... Uh, Druid spells, which is like cleric spells, but is aligned with nature. They're restricted to true neutral, 
However, some of their spells are very powerful. I do mean they are really powerful with some uh, DPS damage and more. Tome Druids, they summon uh, special spirits that helps them out. They cannot ship shape. That's the only disadvantage of that. Now, next up is the Shapeshifter with Life and Throw Thief. They can transform into a werewolf, cannot wear any armor, and they cannot ship shape into anything else because they're werewolf blood in them. Now, Avengers, they're like a uh, cross between a mage and a druid, which is very powerful. Cast some uncane spells, cannot wear any armor at all un to, unless it's leather, and they have stat penalties. Now, next up is the mage class. It cannot wear any armor, restricted a few weapons, 1d4 hit dice, so that means they're the lowest hit points in the game. However, the intelligence is their primary stat. They learn their spells from scribing scrolls, and you can pick and choose which spells you want in there, as long as you have the intelligence. So let's talk about the specialization. Avager is protective magic, however, you cannot learn alteration or illusion schools if you pick this uh, specialization path. Now, next on the list is Conjurer, Summoning Creatures and Objects. However, you cannot learn Invocation Spells. No DPS for you. Well, somewhat DPS. After that is the Diviner, Detection, Divining Magic. You learn Specialized. However, you cannot learn uh, Conjuration. That means you cannot summon. Now, next up is the Enchanter. Now, Enchanter deals with manipulating the mind of Sentinel beings. However, you cannot learn Invocation School if you pick this path. After that is a Illusionist. Now, Illusionist specializes in creating illusions and mislead. However, you can't learn Necromancy or Abjuration School. Nope on those two schools. Now, next up is the Invoker. Deals with manipulation of raw and elemental energies. Basically, most DPS spells. You can't learn Divination or Conjuration Schools. No on that. Now, Necromancer deals with the dead and summoning the uh, dead or in death. You can't learn Illusion or Enchantment Schools if you pick this path. Now, as for uh, Transmuter, last but not least, the Specialization School deals with uh, Alters of uh, Physical Reality. You cannot learn Abjuration or Necromancy Schools. And that's it for the Specialization Schools. Now, next up is the Wild Mage. They gain one extra spell slot and some other uh, spells that deals with Wild Search. Wild Search happens when there's a 5% chance of a spell being cast, so be careful what you uh, cast. You might cast that Magic Missile and summon a Demon or uh, something better that benefits you. So my advice on the mage section is pick the generalist mage right here, this class. And if you feel good, pick the specialization in your second playthrough, or even wild mage, just try for fun. And that's it for the uh, mage section of this video. Now, next up is the thief class. Let's talk about the base of that class. You cannot wear any armor heavier than studded. If you uh, do, you lose your thieving abilities if you uh, multi-class or dual class. You could backstab, you could steal, you could disable traps, you could pick locks, pick pockets, and you could also evade. And there's also a set number of uh, backstabbing too in multiplayer. So you also have evasion too. All you have one d six hit dices, and you only you cannot be lawful good. No, there's no lawful good thief. And dexterity is their main uh, attribute. Now assassins they specialize in poisoning weapons, and their backstabs more uh, powerful. And they only can distribute 15 skill points per level. That's their disadvantage. Now, next up is the uh, Bounty Hunter. Now, Bounty Hunter are uh, trap crazy uh, thieves. They can also uh, trap targets, do some damage. They're very nasty with traps. However, their disadvantage is they only get 20 skill points per level. Swashbucklers, they have fighter abilities, plus one armor class, and more. And they specialize in two slot melee weapons, three and two weapon style. However, they cannot backstab or do anything else thievish. Shadow dancers, they could disappear via stealthing or even plain sight. Their backstab multiplier is weaker. And they may not use a set snare ability. And that's it basically for the thief class. Now next up is the bard class. They could sing songs, wear armor heavier than chain mail. They can even use it as scrolls, which is awesome. However, if you cast spells, you will have to uh, equip, unquip your armor. And they have some good songs. They have some really uh, good songs. Their alignment is restricted to neutral. However, their hit dice is 1d6. So overall, they're like the jack of all trades, master of none, with some thieving abilities and some singing. Now, blades, they have all offensive spins and defensive spins. They can play the Battle of the Three Heroes. However, everything else they cannot play, and their uh, lore and pickpocket values are uh, lower. Jesters, they sing chaotic songs, drive people nuts, mainly the m -Neat. However, their other songs are uh, canceled if you pick this uh, kit. Now, Scouts, on the other hand, they have uh, bonus to damage rolls. They sing uh, 
AC buffing songs and damage songs. However, their pickpocket scores are uh, one quarter lower than normal. And that's it for the uh, Bard class. Now, next up is the Sorcerer class. The difference between a Sorcerer and Mage is simple. Mages learn their spells from scribing scrolls in their books. Sorcerers, they learn their spells from leveling. So, you gotta pick wisely on Sorcerer for their spells. Otherwise, everything else is the same between the Mage and Sorcerers for armor, hit points, and uh, more. Now, next up are Monks. Their unarmed fighters cannot wear any armor. However, their fists are their weapons. They have special abilities, which includes uh, Stunning Blow and more, and their armor class starts to get lower every time they level, and their fists start to become more magical weapons. And basically, uh, monks are uh, not bad. They're actually uh, pretty good to use if you want to use a uh, unarmed fighter. And they're restricted lawful. That's the uh, bad news. Now, dark monks are like evil monks. They have frozen fists, which deals frost damage. They also use blindness ones per day to cast blur, vampire touch, and mirror image. Sun Soul Monks, they deal with uh, fire and taking out undead. They're very powerful. However, they lose Stunning Blow and Quivering Prom. They're restricted lawful good. So that's it for the Monk. If you're into uh, fist fighting, just like the Shaolin Monks, Monks are for you. Now, next up is the Shaman class. They're restricted to studded armor, leather armor, and hide armor. Cannot use any shields larger than bucklers. Now, good and bad news about their spells is this. Their uh, spells, they uh, learn from leveling. Just like sorcerers, no memorization, pick and go, rest when you need a rest. Now they have a special dance move. When they dance, they take penalties. However, they summon help. They're restricted to uh, neutral alignments, and their hit dice is 1d8, and do not benefit from high wisdom uh, scores. The Shaman class came from the Siege of Dragon Spear Baldur's Gate 1 expansion pack, and that is it for all the classes so far in Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition. So now on to the next section. Now, next up is the alignment, so let me go over each and every one of the alignments. For instance, Lawful Good, they believe in the rules that benefits everyone, believes that law should benefit everyone. A good example of that is a Paladin. I'm going to probably say Dupree from Ultima series. Now, Neutral Good, they believe in uh, being in the middle of chaos and law. How are differences? If the rules aren't that valuable, that's evil, then they'll fight against it. Otherwise, they're good guys really in the middle. Now, care are good, they don't believe in rules, however, they believe in the greater good, even if it breaks all the rules. Good example is Robin Hood, he's for the people. Now, next up on the list is Lawful Neutral, they don't care if the uh, rules are good or evil, they believe everything down the middle. Now, after that's True Neutral, they're uh, right smack in the center. For instance, if some soldiers are attacking Cobalts, all of a sudden the Cobalts are about to be wiped out. The neutral, true neutral people will join inside of Cobalts. Now, Chaotic Neutral, they believe in uh, no laws. Also, they're uh, chaotic, at times seriously chaotic, not good or evil. They'll uh, gamble all your money away. Be careful with them. Lawful Evil, they bend their will, rules to their needs, to their benefits. Think of a politician for that, for that instance. Neutral Evil, they don't believe in uh, law or chaos. They believe in the middle. However, if it makes them money or even hurts people, they'll go for it. Now, last but not least is Chaotic Evil. No rules. They believe to take everything by power. If you are weak, they'll smash you and destroy you. Chaotic Evil are the most evil personalities. So that's your alignment. There are some restrictions to alignment. For instance, Paladins, they'll be stuck with Lawful Good. Thieves, they cannot be Lawful Good. So choose accordingly on your alignment. Now, let's get with the attributes. First of all is Strength. That gives you more melee damage, you can also open doors, carry more items. Strong character means uh, much more uh, powerful melee and carrying things. Now next up is uh, dexterity. Now dexterity affects your uh, hand-eye coordination and also uh, your armor class. Higher dexterity, the lower your armor class. You want lower armor class in this uh, game. Trust me on that. After dexterity is, I believe, is constitution. Now constitution Gives you some resistance against uh, diseases and injuries and more. However, when you level up, you get more uh, constitution means more hit points. So that's just where more hit points come from. After that's intelligence, how smart your character is. It's very important for mages, mages because lower intelligence, lower chance of learning spells. So get that intelligence to 18. Wisdom means uh, 
your judgment and more. That's great for uh, priests such as clerics and uh, druids. Get that high to 18 at least for them. Now, after this, the last one is, I believe, is charisma. How well people perceive you. Also, some abilities uh, will uh, benefit from that, such as from uh, druids, bards, and paladins, especially paladins, because they started with 17 charisma. So my advice on uh, rolling the uh, stats is simple. Look at the total number. If it gets, say, uh, above the 80s or so, then you do is use the minus keys right there and just uh, pick which stat you want in your characters. I have a fire, for instance. I'm doing strength right there. Now, strength, for instance, if you roll on strength and get lucky, that's 18 and 0, which means 18 and 100. Other than that, that's my advice on your uh, character rolls. Now, next up is your proficiency sheet slots, how proficient you are in weapons. More proficiency, more uh, damage you do, more bonus you get with certain weapons or even styles. So when you are playing this game, pick the weapon and then pick the weapon style you're most comfortable with. Now next up is your appearance. This is all, all optional. There's a set of color palettes there. So if you want to look like a night elf, go for it. If you want to look like the dead, go for it. If you want to look like a normal person, go for it. If you want to look like the Incredible Hulk, definitely go for it. Same thing with hairstyle. You want pink hairstyle, go for it. You want black, go for it. You want to dress like the Incredible Hulk, as in looks right here, go for it. This is just optional and cosmetic. And that's the sounds too of the game too. Now if you're on the PC version, and if someone's modding sounds, they can add sounds to their files. Console version not so much, but the sounds are very uh, good in the game. So my final advice is, is uh, create each of the six characters you want to your needs. Leastly have a uh, cleric, mage, thief, and fire, and then fill in the rest as your uh, needs. Now let's talk about the UI basics and more and some advice about town, what you do. Now when you're in town, talk to everybody. That's important, obviously. That's seriously important. Also, I'll show it by formation later on too, but let's uh, go through the selections. So when you select your characters, you can select them all at once or one at a time. You can move them around. Console version, most likely you have to use a controller unless you're on the Switch. I'll probably have the option to tap the screen, which is very uh, nice. So now that's the map right there. That's your map. Use it a lot. Just trust me. It helps you immensely. Next up is your journal. It gives you updates on quests and more. The old version of the games, it was a mess uh, with the quests. In the Hans Edition, they did a great job of that. Now, next up is the inventory screen. This is your inventory screen right here where you get to hold your things. Inventory space is very limited. Same thing on the ground, too. Now, there's quick weapon slots depending on what class you have. And also your weight right there. So if you're stronger, more you could carry. Weaker, less you could carry. Now, first of all, is armor class. It tells you how much armor class you have. The uh, lower the number, the better it is. Your hit points right there, 13 and 13, for instance, I have 13 current hit points and 13 maximum. Now, to hit right here, here's how it works. If you have base uh, Tycho of uh, 19 and your foe is 17, you need to roll a 12 or better on the dice in order to hit him. Otherwise, you won't hit him at all. As for uh, Fist, that's your weapon right there, unless you have a better weapon. That's basically it for your inventory slot. As for uh, Tycho, make sure you uh, equip weapons you're uh, specialized to. For instance, if this guy is a baster sword, well, make sure you equip baster swords. And my uh, barbarian uses um, short swords, so make sure you equip that on her too. So again, if you're starting to get over encumbrant, give your uh, items that are more heavier to stronger characters. And also make sure you save your story items. Most story items are weak. Give them to your... Uh, Weak links like your uh, mages and uh, more. And that's it for the uh, inventory system basically. It's really good in this game and it's really easy to use. Next up is your character records. Left of the uh, portrait is your stats. And the bottom of the stats is your uh, hit points, armor class, and more. On the right it's there. Now reputation is not important just as Baldur's Gate 1, but still there's certain points in the game you want good reputation. Very important for uh, paladins or uh, good guy classes. You do anything wrong. You become fallen, and then you cannot become a paladin or druid anymore, and it's painful. And those are the, your uh, saving throws right there that tells you what you could resist, uh, what resistance you could do good, what you could do bad, and there's also your proficiency. See, my character has proficiencies in long swords and baster swords. And there's your abilities to hit, damage, and uh, more. There's also a kit description, customization. You can even export it to uh, different games if you want to, I believe. But I think it's only for this game. Now, next up, this is your uh, major spell books. Once you scribe a spell, or if you're a sorcerer, your spells will go automatically go here. 
So there's only a set number of spells you can scribe depending on your intelligence for mages. Sorcerers, they're forced in a set number. So remember that for uh, mages and sorcerers. Now next up is the uh, priest scrolls. For instance, druids and um, clerics, even your paladins and rangers. They learn a set number of spells. As for shamans, well, they're just like sorcerers. They only learn a set amount, and that is it right there. So that's it for this spell casting section. Now, next up, let's talk about the rest of the UI. The uh, gear right there, you want to save. Save often, save early, save before going to a dungeon, save before a uh, level start. Save before fighting a boss. Save, save, save. That's important. There's also formation on the bottom screen there. Use it and abuse it. Also, the magnifying glass. They had an enhanced edition that could turn on permanently the names of NPCs you can see and your character's hit points. And also spot loot on the ground makes things easier. And I paused the game right there. Also, that's your day and time. So, daytime stores are open. Nighttime, they're not. Goes good into an inn. And as for resting, I advise uh, resting outside. If you do, be careful. Enemies could jump you. Ends are the safest in the game, especially in this game. Just trust me. And, and last but not leastly, talk to everybody. It helps immensely. So that's basically it for the uh, UI section of this uh, game here. Now in the next section, I'll show a quick demonstration of uh, combat. Now, next part you're going, oh boy, combat, what should I do? Very simple. Abuse the pause section. Pause the game. Pick your characters to your needs. Now, tougher enemies use spells, otherwise could serve your uh, spells, otherwise you're going to have to rest a lot, especially for uh, mages and clerics to get their uh, spells back. Other than that, make sure you uh, kill every enemy you can, tell your needs, be careful, plan accordingly, abuse the uh, pausing this game, and that's looting right there, it's very easy. And when you level up, there's a plus on your uh, screen. So let's talk about loot randomization next. Last but not least, what makes Icewind Dale unique is loot randomization. Now, you see that dungeon there? Here's the deal about that. Save your game, and then if you go in a dungeon, go inside of a chest or defeat an enemy, there's, say, a boot to speed on one enemy, then loot it up if you want. If you don't like it, then uh, reload your save before the uh, dungeon, and a different item will appear. Sometimes there are static items, but still, Icewind Dale is uh, perfect for randomization of loot, and some randomization loot is really uh, good. So that's basically about how the dungeons work in the game. And here's my uh, tips. If you have a thief or a thief uh, class, make sure uh, you go in slowly, go stealthily, look for traps. Traps can kill in this game. Uh, make sure your uh, weak uh, characters are in the back. Everybody else is up front. Rest. If you're going to rest, be careful outside. Enemies will uh, jump you like a whole bunch of yetis did outside here. Also, uh, know what to buy and know what to uh, sell. Uh, know your characters too. Another good advice I'm going to give everybody is, is uh, spell memorization. Pick which spells you want to memorize and uh, also use. There's also uh, breach spells that are great for uh, casters. Uh, as for uh, clerics, you go healing spells, buffing spells. There's even death ward. If you get that later on, put that on everybody or at least the important people up line up front. Torn Undead is a wonderful uh, tool you'll be facing a lot in the game or at least in this part of the game. And other than that, just have fun, enjoy the game, and tailor your party to your uh, needs. Well, that is it for my Don't Panic Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition New Player Guide video. This is uh, Lord Fitton signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a wonderful day or night.